Alright, does finish him off. Gets two. Gets three. What if Sweater hit that hits him 65%? Whoa! And does it go in? It goes in! It goes in! The line's been Good morning again. We are going to be facing off against St. Xavier University in Chicago. Currently, they are running through the making of the arena, so let's review some of the sponsors that we have and events that will be coming up. Shout out to HyperX for giving for donating mice keyboards, headsets, and mouse pads. If you saw the headset that I was wearing, that came from HyperX. And shout out to Over the Moon. They are proud supporters of our esports team. Every Tuesday, they'll be playing our game, any game that is playing that night. They also have student nights, so if you're a student in Marietta, You'll get discounted pizza. Further partners include Buy Blue Light Glasses, Elgato, Incrediware, Kovax, and MSI. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Sign up with your Amazon Prime account with, for Prime Gaming, and you get custom Marietta Esports emotes. It's free, as long as you have a Prime account. Tryouts. Our tryout dates on this are currently incorrect. It's actually on February 18th. Going through the steps of filling out our include feet, which include Rocket League, Smash, Rainbow Six, Fortnite, and another Smash game. Here is our roster. We are going to be having, well, anyone from Mars, Redman, Kinkudinku, Ginger Ale, and C. Stoffel playing today. And it looks like we're getting ready to start, so. We'll be starting off with Breadman and King DDD. Changing up the music to something from Earthbound. Maybe. So since 
St. Xavier University is home this time, we are most likely banning right now, and then they will pick the stage. Sorry about that technical difficulty. This is still the same broadcast. We are still fighting against Saint Xavier. If you if you're just now showing up, we finished up the match against Heidelberg. Let's go, Breadman from Trackstar. Yeah, good luck, Breadman. From when we were scout, from when we were scouting Saint Xavier, he was particularly excited about a character that they seemed to play quite a bit. So hopefully, Breadman gets to play the preferred character. Seems like St. Xavier is now ready. And we will be playing on... Having a bit of trouble finding this map.
Which map did they choose? Oh, Town and City? Ah, Kalos. Yes, Kalos has the unfortunate. Just right in the middle. A Robin versus King DDD. So this is not uh, Breadman's preferred character to play against, but I believe that Breadman can lead us to victory. Going for a lot of the aerials and got the quick first damage off with that spinning hammer attack. I believe that's a tilt. Oh, we're facing lag with the stream, but there it is back. Now. Robin is a magic user, but very limited. However, if Breadman is able to suck up any of the projectiles with DDD's neutral B, that that could allow a lot. But it seems like they're going for when he can charge them. Nice shot with the aerial Gordo, getting that high arc second bounce. The Robin bouncing into the second Gordo, blocking that third one. And the fourth one just going right over. Breadman seems to be fishing for way more attacks with the Gordo. In order to get that spinning hammer and uppercut. Trying to go for that smash attack, but unfortunately DDD did not have power armor. I don't think DDD has any powder power armor in order to protect from that. Oh, we're getting more lag. But... He was able to stop the fire, unable to stop the electric. Trying to go for a Gordo attack, but Robin just keeps shielding, seeming to know exactly what to do against it. Able to deflect the fire projectile with the Gordo. Second Gordo was shielded. Trying to go for that edge guard, but unfortunately, Robin still had her invincibility of frames and now she's trying to counter the Gordo with her own projectiles. There's the sh there's the projectile reflection that DDD is DDD and Kirby are known for but particularly DDD with Kirby having the copy abilities. Anyways seems like he's trying to fish for anything and the Robin is willing to run out the clock. Oh but there's a lag trying to more lag trying to once again attack with l thunders going for that gordo and getting a special attack unfortunately l wind able but there's trying to break her shield with the smash attack but unfortunately just unable to get that off but ddd is still surviving with the jumps trying to once again suck robin up unfortunately she was shielding and she was too far Trying to go right into attacking Robin with the with the with the up B. Robin has that thunder fully charged. And that's what he was trying to get. Let's go! Trying to get greedy with how DDD would not suck it up. In fact, they're the audience is cheering for DDD. <laughs> Arcfire was unable to hit, getting hit by the up B. Arc Thunder unable to be sucked up, but there was a second one sucked up. Unfortunately, it did miss. There's the fire projectile. Blocking with the... Blocking... Shielding the Gordo multiple times and getting combos on L Thunder while DDD is unable to suck it. But there's the suck that gets the Gordo into the... Unfortunately, it seems like they're both... They're both playing... Def they're both playing aggressive, but also in a way to keep away. This is a very projectile heavy fight, but there's the Gordo hitting. There's, once again, fishing for a smash attack, but unable to hit because of the position on the, 
Oh, there it is again. S trying to go for the rocket, but unfortunately no power armor on DDD. Meaning that he's able to be hit. The Gordo hitting the arc fire in the air, causing it to activate. Robin going above DDD so that way he... They can hit. And that's going to be the first match. Still, well done, bread man. Choose your fighter, Mr. Game and Watch. Next up is Cheshire. Now Cheshire with Game & Watch. Game & Watch is also an anti-projectile and projectile using character. So they are going PS2, the Robin will have to drop one stock against Cheshire's Game & Watch. Three, two, one, go! And now the match has begun. Cheshire's Game & Watch is immediately trying for that juggling strategy that that Game & Watch is usually so good at with the back air of Snapping Turtle. But Robin is going for a lot of more close combat moves, most likely. But there's the Elf Thunder. Trying to charge up that Arc Fire, filling up the entirety of Game & Watch's bucket. I don't know how strong that move is, but I know that it is very strong. Unfortunately, we are getting a bit of lag. Oh, but there's Cheshire going for a juggling strategy once again, trying to smack, trying to get Robin into the ground with the down smash, I believe that is. Trying to once again fish for filling the bucket, but there is the first stock off of Game & Watch due to a meteor smash. But there's the bomb. Trying to fish for more of those projectiles. However, if they do that too much, and there's Robin trying to heal off of any damage that they can do with, I believe that's, I don't know which move that is. I believe that's a side B. Once again, trying to fish for those projectiles, but if they do that too much, Robin is going to try for a lot more close combat, which may put Game & Watch at a disadvantage unless they can get off a lot of those back airs. Shielding that fire down another stock for Game & Watch, but able to fill up with one of the thunders. But trying to get in too close with the Robin going for what looks to be an up throw um, forward air combo. Or an up air, uh, up throw back air combo. But there's a back air from Game & Watch. Elf Thunder hitting Game & Watch successfully. Unfortunately, unable to bury Robin just yet. Shielding quite well, but it looks like trying to get too greedy for a parry. Now the bucket is full. Getting a down air off and trying to see if they can... Let's see. 
The bucket is now empty, so it looks like they were trying to fish for that kind of move. Game & Watch still in the game, able to live. There's another hit, and Game & Watch is down. Sorry about the lag with the fight. It looks like we are going in with Ginger Ale's Corrin now against Robin. Going with Battlefield this time. Persona's Battle Hymn of the Soul. I think. Oh, I need to switch those two. No, Corrin needs to drop one. I think that's all Robin needs to drop. And they are ready to fight. They are going... Robin is trying to go for a cheeky little fire and electricity paralysis slash flinching strategy in order to get in up close. There's a lot of aerial movements that they're going for. A lot of jabs coming from Robin and trying to knock Corrin just way off the stage really, really quick. Trying to get that spike with the Elwind. Corrin trying to go for a counter with the Elf Thunder to neutralize it, but unfortunately just not hitting it. Unfortunately at a very high percentage while done barely any damage to the Robin. Trying to go for that back air, but Robin is just really floating up. And there's Corrin's first stock. Corrin going for a juggling strategy, but Robin just getting out of it. Dodging away from the Robin to get away from that arc fire. Great prediction on Corrin's end. Once again, trying to kick, but this time towards Robin. But Robin's going for a juggling strategy, however, Corrin is able to air dodge out of it. Trying to go for the paralysis with the with the projectile on Corrin's end. Unfortunately, unable to hit that neutral air. And Corrin just jumping over most of Corrin's attacks. And shielding through that kick. But there's a paralysis. Would have been great if Ginger Ale could have. More lag. Oh, goodness. Corrin's still trying to go for counters, but getting caught up. There's a successful kick without a shield. Unfortunately, getting hit with the thunder while trying to go for the dragon's. Fang, I think that is. Air dodging away from that neutral air. Corn just a bit afraid to try to kick forwards, otherwise she'd end up off the stage. Arc Thunder dealing a lot of damage. Missing that healing grab. I, I need to know what that move is. The projectile not able to go far enough in order to shrink that shield just a little bit more. Corrin getting a successful counter off, but now Robin's without a sword, needs it to charge. 
So if Corrin could just capitalize and get in close, but now that sword is fully charged, so is that electric buck, but there's the dragon fang able to take down another stock from Robin. Trying to go for a lot of aerial sh shielding. They're really trying to capitalize on each other's mistakes. Trying to get away spot. I saw that was a spot dodge from Robin, I think. Trying to get the dragon's fang, but just missing due to the platforms above Corrin. Jumping over the arc fire and countering it, but unfortunately unable to hit that elf thunder. And now there comes the elf thunder trying to hit Corrin in the air so that way she can't do anything. Corrin's still trying to stay away. The thunder not only hitting the projectile, but also the dragon mod. The Elfire hitting her in the air. And that is game. Game round one. So that was round one. Don't go away. We will be right back.
All right, welcome back. Our, we are going to be starting off with Miss Cheshire's Mr. Game and Watch on Pokemon Stadium 2 against Terry. Incredible. <laughs> Now since this is a brand new match, they are going immediately into fighting. We are going to see a smash attack followed by some, I believe that's a, a front air by Game & Watch. There's, or a front special, side special. There's the up throw to the juggle from Game & Watch, but Terry is going to try to get out of that. Unfortunately going to get up thrown once again. Terry is not going for the jab special as we've seen with the last game, but getting too close and getting... Cheshire is trying to fish for that juggle. Got the bomb parried, but only to end up into the smash attack. Cheshire is trying to keep control of the map by keeping Terry off the stage. With that back air, but Terry is still in, successfully getting up with that recovery and doing a little bit of damage to Game & Watch. Game & Watch successfully shielding from all of Terry's jabs, going for that berry and then that smash attack, getting the first stock off of St. Xavier. Going for trying to juggle Terry again. Successfully shielding some of the attacks, but unfortunately, Terry just kept on attacking and Game Watch let go of the shield too much, too early. Got the projectile to fill up some of the bucket. Oh, the power dunked down and Game and Watch trying to keep Terry off with that. Back air successfully doing so, messing up Terry from recovering. Game and Watch now trying to go for that grab so that way he can get Terry up back into the air to get damage off. Terry successfully parrying that bomb, but not successfully parrying the other one as Game and Watch rolls in and out trying to get m more of the projectile, but unfortunately it seems like Terry's not trying to throw that. Oh dear. Okay, once again, going for that juggle to get Terry up into the air off the stage. Terry getting the first sock off of Marietta with the side B. Trying to go for that Judge 9, super duper risky, but there's the smash attack. Unfortunately, just not enough damage to send Terry way out of the way. Terry using his projectile successfully without it getting bucketed, but there's the the bomb and there's trying to juggle him again there's knocking him off the stage not trying to go for the juggle but instead trying to go for the bomb rolling away and getting Terry out only losing one stock St. Xavier's having to choose who's going up next as well as their stage bands. St. 
seems like we're sticking with Pokemon Stadium 2. But we'll need to see... Which character St. Xavier University goes with. Game & Watch is a very tricky character. Especially with the counters that he can do with the projectiles as well as the mix-ups with the physical attacks as we saw with the um the use of the bomb and the back air the up throw that game and watch does as well into the juggling combo with the we are going to be seeing yoshi from saint xavier university now game and watch will have to drop one stock Yoshi is ready, already taunting. Alright, and there's the start of the fight. Game & Watch getting the first damage off, but unfortunately Yoshi is shielding with that egg. We are gonna be seeing some lag and jumps in damage, unfortunately. But looks like Yoshi just... I don't know what Yoshi did, I'm pretty sure Yoshi just edge guarded. Trying to go for the rolls and shielding successfully against the the bomb into that forward tilt with the kick. Now, unlike other shields, I believe that um. Yoshi's shield doesn't break unless it's hit. But we are gonna see a stock off of Yoshi! And Cheshire going for that juggling strategy, trying to keep Yoshi just in the air, unable to do anything, but there's the flutter jump. There's the back air. I'm Hopefully able to get off enough damage to knock Yoshi far enough to the side. Able to dodge Yoshi's edge guard by just going over and getting that down air when Yoshi was trying to roll up. There's the rollout from Yoshi hitting Cheshire while in the air. Once again, going for that juggling strategy, trying to get off any way to give her to Yoshi, but unfortunately that's going to be the end of that. So next up we have Breadman going up against the Yoshi. No, we're going to see Kinkudinku. Kinkudinku coming out with the Terry. Against Yoshi.
we're going to see a stage change as well. Hollow Bastion. So Yoshi will have to drop one, if I remember correctly. They are ready to fight. Don't want Terry to drop one, please. Alright, there's their taunts, and Yoshi's immediately going for some egg throws. Trying to go for a rollout, but just not able to get enough momentum to do damage. Maybe they were just trying to get out of the way of Terry's attacks. Trying to capitalize on the power dunk missing, but... Not able to. Got the chomp and up throw off. Getting multiple back airs and I'm pretty sure they're just trying to do chip damage or in to get enough. But they're wanting to stay away from that go. Unfortunately. Terry just can't recover from that low. And Yoshi jumping over the projectile, trying to throw, but was unsuccessful. Terry able to get off a successful power dunk. Getting that up recovery, trying to dodge that flutter jump, but just hitting it on the end. Able to get that I believe that's an up throw with Terry's attack. Side B successfully off. Yoshi's still going for that chip damage though. Just I think they're trying to get Terry far enough away that they can't recover once again. But that's another stock off of Yoshi. A successful power dunk combo from Terry. Trying to avoid that Yoshi. He is so close to getting his go, but he's also very close to... He's got the go ready. Can he use it and get that final stock off of Yoshi? Let's hope so, folks. Power geyser, but unfortunately, Yoshi was just... Oh, and there's... That's what Yoshi must have done using the egg lay. Terry successfully dodging that egg roll. Oh no, the lag. Successful parry, but flutter jump does do multiple attacks. But there's the side B. Knocking you off Yoshi's last stock. Okay. Well done, Kinku Dinku. So Terry's got one more stock and we have a whole other player, but St. Xavier University's last player is going to come out. Let's see if they're trying to go for an anchor and have a very strong person at the back. Are we going to see that Robin again or are we going to see someone different? Are we going for Hollow Bastion again? S 
small battlefield. St. Xavier University coming out with the Kazuya. That's her. <laughs> so again, Terry does have to jump off twice. And then we'll have to see the taunt. And now they are ready. Now what's fun about both of these characters is that they are both from fighting games. So they have their own specialized combos. But different styles of fighting because of the two different video games. Now, while Terry is at a dif at a disadvantage with only one stock, it will be fascinating to see these two fight. We're seeing that power dunk. We're seeing a charge up smash, but unfortunately, Kazuya does hit, and it sounds like we just got a game. Three v three. One to one. Choose your fighter. Corin. Ginger Ale's Corin coming out to round out the match. Smashville, interesting. Already going into it. They're both playing very defensively, but Kazuya is trying to get moves a lot more aggressively, and that's causing them to miss a bit. Unfortunately, Kazuya also has the same paralysis that Korin can do, just with a more physical move. And it looks like they are fishing to keep Corrin off using that kick and eye laser. Corrin jumping above to try to get back onto the stage, but the stage is just very small and Kazuya is able to hit them way off the stage due to that high percentage already. Side B, solid move, solid moves. Kazuya still trying to keep just Corrin away from recovering with that eye laser. Successful kick from Corrin with the side B. Trying to go with that up air. That side B trying to hit. There goes the projectile. Did not hit though. Once again, they're both playing very... They're trying to space each other out, but there's... A grab and forward throw, I think it was. Kazuya is at a high percentage, which does mean he does... I don't recall what that does for Kazuya. I know that for Terry, some moves get stronger. And I think it's the same for Kazuya. But let's hope that with this high enough percentage,
Corrin can get a good attack off to keep him down. Unfortunately, edge guarded by what looked to be a down smash, but now Kazuya's at a very high percentage and Corrin has barely any damage and that's gonna be a stock off of Kazuya. Unfortunately, the grab and throw, I believe, is just doing a lot of damage. Knocked off, but didn't go for the eye laser this time. Corrin's staying up above, but unfortunately that downer isn't able to go through the platform. Meaning Kazuya was protected by it, but there's the Dragon Fang. There's Neutral Air trying to fish for that back air to hit him way off the stage like it can do. Unsuccessful counter leading to an up air that just did, not an up air, a recovery that just got blocked by the stage. That is going to be our game, but don't go anywhere. We have a replay of one of our league matches. So stick around for that. Thanks for watching our Smash matches.